And joining us today on our Book Talk segment, great to welcome a man who's written an interesting book uh, all about uh, why we like to see uh, people fight. It's called The Professor in the Cage, Why Men Fight and Why We Like to Watch. We're joined by Jonathan Gottschall today. He's a professor, actually a distinguished research fellow up at uh, Washington and Jefferson College. Joined us by telephone today. Jonathan, good to talk to you. How are you today? I'm great, Doug. Thanks for having me on. I really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, now, i, I got to say, I, I cover a lot of sports, but I, I don't follow you, uh, FC, very closely other than just what you see, uh, you know, in the high highlights once in a while but uh, yeah but you, you took this to heart and you wanted to you wanted to try this out didn't you get in the cage I did I did yeah you know it, it was a few years ago and I was working as a adjunct instructor at this liberal arts college and I had never managed to find my way onto the tenure track and I could see that I probably wasn't going to I was sort of having this midlife crisis I was about 40 <laughs> years old and then you know one day I'm at office hours and it's, it's surprising thing happens. I opened up the window and this new business had opened up across the street and it was one of these cage fighting gyms. And I could see the young guys, you know, there's a snowball throw away. I could see them in the cage. They were dancing, they were hitting, they were tackling, they were rolling. And I was ambushed by this emotion that I did not expect and it was envy. I envied those guys. They seemed so alive in their cage where I felt like I was rotting away inside my office cubicle. And so I had this sort of funny thought, and the thought was, it was a little joke that I was, you know, telling myself. And the joke was, wouldn't it be funny if I went over there? You know, me, I'm 40, uh, I'm not in very good shape, I've literally never been in a fist fight in my whole life. Um, and then I had a more sober thought, which was, well, hey, you know, maybe this could be a new thing for me. Maybe there's a book in this, a sort of nonfiction version of Fight Club, where I'd walk across the street, I'd try to learn how to fight, and all the while I'd be uh, examining and exploring these really ancient and important questions about the history of human violence. It's amazing that uh, MMA, it's been out, I guess, about 10 years or so now, at least as far as... Uh, about you know, 22 uh, years. Is it that long now? Yeah, I guess it's yeah, popular in the last 10 years, but it's That's amazing. Right. Young, younger people, I guess, I'd say 30 and under, really gravitate toward it. I guess the older folks still like boxing, but uh, but it's amazing, uh, the popularity of that sport. It has boomed. It has boomed so fast. And it's one of the things that drew me to it. It's like, wow, this has really come out of nowhere. Why are people embracing this to this degree? You know, in 1993, it was a real carnival sideshow. And in, in the present day, uh, mixed martial arts has a fan base that rivals that of the NHL. It is really, really blown up. And in your book, the, the thesis of it, I think you've written on it uh, in, in previous uh, books as well, and, and, and it really goes to all sports that are, uh, if you want to call it violent, or at least uh, you know, hard-hitting, football included, yeah. hockey included, boxing, of course, uh, why mm -hmm. people like to watch it, particularly men, but not necessarily all men, but uh, uh, it's an interesting study, isn't it? Well, it sure was interesting to me, you know, and I don't know if you've had the same sensation, but, you know, watching fights on TV over the last 15, 20 years, I would watch them in this sense of guilty fascination. I'd be thinking to myself, you know, a civilized, educated, peace-loving guy, I appear <laughs> not to be a sociopath, uh, so why am I watching these guys beat each other up? Why? Wh what's wrong with me? And what's wrong with all of us? Because... Even those of us who wouldn't be caught dead at a cage fight or a boxing match still consume a ton of entertainment violence, from NFL games to films and TV shows and classic literature like Shakespeare. Um, but here's what I came around to. You know, I assumed going in that what draws us to a combat sport must be, you know, barbarism and bloodlust. But I came around to a different point of view. Because, you know, here's the thing. I don't ever want to watch an ISIS torture slash murder video. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you do either. I don't think most people want to see that. But I find it really hard not to watch two men fighting. And I think it's because a fight is just the most intense and, you know, uh, concentrated form of drama imaginable. Uh, it's, it's reality TV. All of the pain is real. All of the elation is real. Fights set up these conditions of incredible adversity that draw forth the best part of human nature. You know, courage and boldness and extremes of endurance and perseverance. So I think I'll sound to some people like an apologist for violence. But I think what draws people to sport fighting isn't that they want to revel in or succumb to the ugliest and most nasty side of human nature. I think they go to these contests because they want to honor 
and celebrate what's best in human nature. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. I think also, uh, you know, in, in a boxing uh, match, you, you tend to know, and I know there have been some, you know, tragic uh, deaths very, very rarely in boxing, but you tend to think that both guys are going to be okay no matter what happens, even one guy gets knocked out. So you're not going to see something horrible. You're not going to watch nice this torture. And you still enjoy the, the battle. I think that's part of it. Yeah, there's a, there's a drama and an intensity to the drama that is hard for other forms of entertainment to match. Yeah. Yeah, same with, uh, with, with hockey. I mean, that's, uh, that's a pretty uh, uh, high collision sport. Occasionally there's fights in hockey, not as many as there used to be, but I think that's the same thing. You're seeing something that only very few people can do well, and, uh, and, and, and the, uh, you know, the, the drama of that uh, comes through. But again, you're not going to see, uh, barring the very rare exception, uh, you know, a death or a horrible tragedy. I think, I think you sort of know at the end it's going to work out okay. Is that, is that part of the psychology of it? I, I, think, uh, I think that's part of the psychology of it. It's interesting how that psychology is starting to alter, though, the more we learn about the sort of negative effects of, of head trauma. Mm -hmm. And so that guy in the cage fight or the boxing match is very unlikely to die. He's probably as likely to get struck by lightning. Um, but we know that he's doing damage to his brain right. that's going to possibly shorten his life and possibly curtail the quality of his life. And so there is a really uh, difficult moral bind that this puts sports fans on. You talk in the book uh, about the term monkey dance. I never heard it put that way before. I understand you're, you're, what you talk about. Maybe give a, a brief, uh, brief uh, explanation of what that is. What, what, what particularly men do, I guess when they uh, <laughs> in this kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, if you've seen, like, a nature video of, like, two elephant seals squaring off in the surf or two uh, mountain goats cracking skulls on a mountainside, biologists call that ritual combat. It's a way that animals have developed to figure out who's bigger and stronger and tougher without the danger of fighting it out to the death. And... Humans are animals, too. We're complicated animals, we're cultural animals, but we're still animals. And the monkey dance is my name for human versions of ritual combat. Everything from deadly duels to verbal duels to sports. And the key thing about these monkey dances is that they often seem silly and stupid, and sometimes they'll escalate to actual tragedy. But on the whole, we're lucky that we have them. On the whole, they keep our contest civilized. They give us a way to find out who's, you know, to, to settle a dispute or to thrash out our social hierarchies without having to fight it out to the bitter end. You got a great picture in the book. Uh, it's a boxing photo. One of the fighters doing the uh, the stare down. The other guy uh, not even looking at him. I guess the stare down is one of the things, uh, particularly animals, do, right? Yeah, the, uh, eye contact duels are very common in uh, in primates, in dozens of different species of primates. They maintain their social arrangements. They maintain they have their dominance contests. They'll have fights sometimes too, but oftentimes it's all managed with the eyes. Uh, they'll have these sort of staring duels, and that's very common with people too if i stare at you very hard from across the bar you're going to feel uncomfortable you're going to know that i'm being aggressive and you'll feel the need to either stare back hard to challenge me in some way or to say hey i don't want to get involved in this and to get out of that bar uh and so in in fights you know there's a, a ritual of the stare down duel where between before most fights uh, the guys will try very very hard to maintain constant unwavering eye contact because according to fight lore, if you lose that stare down contest, you basically submitted. You've basically shown your fear, and you're doomed to lose the actual contest. It's kind of interesting that animals, uh, you know, fighting or violence is the very last uh, last uh, thing that they do. Uh, I think humans tend to go for the violence quicker than animals do, right? I mean, that's the last resort for an animal. No, to I I, yeah, I wouldn't think so. I don't think so. I think, you know, with people, as with most animals, uh, both parties would rather not have a fight. Yeah. Fighting is dangerous. Fighting is really, really dangerous. Even if you're much bigger than me, and you're much stronger and much tougher, and the odds are all on your side, there's still an extreme physical danger. Uh, you might just hurt your hands beating me up, you know? <laughs> uh, so people uh, would, what people want, uh, what bullies want in particular, a bully doesn't want to fight you. A bully does not want to have a, test his skills in a fair fight. What the bully wants is to take your stuff, to take your pride, to take your social status, to take your possessions without having to have a fight over it. So 
So most times, you know, there's this great scene in the movie Fight Club that I love. Uh, one of the assignments the guys in Fight Club get is they have to go out into the world and try to pick a fight with someone, but then they have to lose the fight. Mm. And what was hilarious about this scene is that the guys from Fight Club go out into the world, they try to provoke a fight, and how hard it was to get another man to fight with them. Uh, for the most part, people want to avoid violence. Yeah, I, I, I'm one of those people. <laughs> but in the last you resort, you, you, you do what you got to do to, to protect yourself. But I, I agree. I that's mean, right. Talk about bullies, they're, they're, they're more out of dominance than uh, than fighting. That's what they want to do, don't you? Right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. That's well, right. It's, it's a fascinating book, and you talk in it about your experiences, uh, not only training for uh, uh, a cage fight, but you don't have to talk about it now if you don't want to let the people read about it, but what happened in, in the ring? Uh, do you still train at all, <laughs> Jonathan? <laughs> I, I do still train. I trained uh, for another two years after that fight, so three years uh, in total. And I did so because I... I really ended up enjoying it. I enjoyed the sparring and the training and the camaraderie. Um, but uh, I got I just got so injured that I really couldn't continue anymore. Yeah, it's, got it's, too it's beat up. Brutal, brutal sport. But uh, anyway, the name of the book is the Professor in the Cage, Why Men Fight, Why We Like to Watch. Jonathan Gottschall has been our guest. Uh, Jonathan, do you have a website you want to direct people to? Oh, sure. You could go to jonathangottschall.com. It's spelled G-O-T-T-S-C-H-A-L-L. Great. Jonathan, pleasure talking to you. Good luck with the book. Hope we can talk to you again sometime, but uh, thanks for joining us today. I had great fun. Thanks, Doug. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.